All right, we are live. Thank you for joining us today. Today I have on Perfect Dawa. Uh, we'll get a chance to learn a little bit about himself, uh, but for now, sufficient to know that he is a Muslim uh, who requested a conversation with me. I requested several different topics and we'll get to other topics on a later date. But today we're going to be discussing whether or not the Bible has been corrupted. Um, obviously, from an Islamic perspective. Uh, before we get into any of that, I'm going to start with a word of prayer, as I usually do. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time together. We thank you for the technology that allows us to connect with people around the world, people of very different beliefs, people who are Christians, people who are Muslims, and people who are some other belief system or what they would call no belief at all. We ask that you guide us towards the truth, whatever that may be. We ask that you, everyone who's watching, that you help them pursue the truth. We ask that whatever that is said is true and useful today is remembered and retained by people, that people take the information and uh, apply it to their own beliefs, apply it to how they live their life. But likewise, or perhaps uh, in contrast, anything that is said is false or is useless is simply forgotten because ultimately we all want to know what is the truth and follow that. I ask that you be with me on a personal level today to help me um, get through this presentation, get through this. I am running on a slow amount of sleep, as you know, but I have confidence that you will give me the strength to persevere through this conversation. I ask that you bless everyone who catches this presentation, whether live or on a replay, and that you guide everyone to you, whoever you may be, the one true God. Um, all right. <clears throat> uh, hold on one one second. I accidentally have a video playing in the background. No one else will hear that, but I will hear it. So it will be a little distracting for me. Uh, so let me just, there we go. Uh, that accidentally started playing on me. Uh, so that is now paused. So we are now good to go. So welcome to the channel. Perfect Dawa. Uh, why don't you start by introducing yourself? Just tell us a little bit about your background and why you are interested in having these conversations. Yes. Uh, uh, hello, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if it is late to say Happy Easter, <laughs> but I, if it is still uh, fine, Happy Easter to all my brothers and sisters in uh, Christianity. And uh, yes, um, I am born in a Muslim family. And I was, um, you know, at the age of 25, I started to question existence of God. <clears throat> and after a few days, uh, because of lack of knowledge, <clears throat> I decided that God doesn't exist. But the later, kind of th uh, 10 years later, <clears throat> I, uh, because I learned some uh, scientific facts about the end and how the world will end and all these things. <clears throat> and when I saw that uh, pagans believe in reincarnation and it will continue forever, but Abrahamic religion believe uh, that the world will end. So it started to wake me up that how could they know such a things, yeah? <clears throat> so I started to, uh, anyway, learn. And then <clears throat> I found the, uh, the way out of all our problems in Islam, and that's why I converted to Islam. <clears throat> and I have said it many times, uh, I'm not a Muslim because God exists. Uh, I'm not a Muslim because Prophet Muhammad was prophet of God. <clears throat> I'm a Muslim because uh, I believe that, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I believe that God sent us prophets to solve our problems. And uh, I found the way out of all our problems in Islam and uh, yes that's why I converted to Islam and <clears throat> uh, my main uh, mission is to fight Islamic extremists who uh, you know destroy the beautiful image of my religion 
And I believe that uh, we are all brothers and sisters in creation, and we have to uh, support each other, help each other, uh, and unite against our common enemies. So in my case, uh, one of our common enemies um, are Muslim extremists as well. And um, yes, I don't allow on my channel, I go live every Saturdays. I, uh, on my channel, I don't allow anybody attack Christianity. Uh, in fact, I have uh, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, mostly brothers, Christian brothers who call and they are very, very happy. And um, anybody who watch my uh, debates and my views, they say we wish all Muslims believe uh, like you. So today also, <clears throat> I'm not here to disprove Christianity here. Okay, I'm here also to fight uh, Muslim extremists because uh, I have had this uh, uh, long discussion with them that stoning adulterers, okay, is uh, not a command of God. And usually, despite they say that uh, Bible and Torah is uh, corrupted, they right away say that, oh, look, it is in Bible and Torah, okay? And I say, how come you say that it is corrupted? And now when it comes only to this barbaric act of, uh, you know, uh, pagans, which is Quran mentioned that always this when stoning is mentioned in Quran is referring to the pagans. Okay, so and these pagans who wanted to keep this barbaric act, they came up with uh, fabricated hadiths that yes, the verse came down but was eaten by a goat. Okay, so they wanted to keep this uh, you know act and um, yes, my aim is to fight them and say that no. This is not the command of the most merciful and forgiving God, the most loving God. And I'm very happy that Christians don't follow this. OK, so this is the only thing that I wanted to say here that these command, they try to, uh, you know, they try to corrupt Quran as well. They another thing is that they wanted to keep also was uh, drinking uh, camel urine. Also, they came up with uh, <laughs> with this uh, you know fabricated hadith this is exactly what in india they do but they drink cow urine but they uh, in arabia perhaps they were drinking uh, camel urine so these are things that they couldn't enter in quran because it was protected it was memorized that's why they came up with fabricated hadiths so all i'm here is not to disprove christianity and as long as you don't follow these, you know, these verses, I'm very happy, okay? And I'm uh, thankful to that, that you don't follow them. And my aim is to get rid of these uh, barbaric acts in uh, in the mind of some Muslim extremists, okay? So I hope that I made a good presentation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah you made your position clear and... Uh... To your credit, I do want to say that you definitely are genuine in that. Sometimes people will say something like, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm against X, Y, and Z in this religion, but then they only talk about that to people who aren't members uh, of the religion. Like, you know, for your example, like I'm, I'm against the practice of, of stoning at altars, uh, but then they don't like try to correct any Muslim uh, from you know, using your example, they wouldn't try to correct any Muslim who has that opinion. They would only use that as arguments against non-believers saying, oh, you know, anyone who, who says that they're not really a Muslim. But when people usually do that, they don't actually, uh, they don't demonstrate that they actually genuinely believe that because they don't try to correct their people in their own religion. Mm -hmm. So to your credit, you are definitely not in that category. As Thank you said, you. your channel is primar primarily focused on uh, outreach to Muslims, not to, to people of other religions, but outreach to Muslims to try to correct these things that you perceive as an error in Islam or in the practice of certain Muslims. Yes. Uh, we did have a couple comments along this line uh, that there's no such thing as Muslim extremists. They are true Muslims who follow the Sunnah uh, or someone else said uh, that uh, this guy does not represent Islam. Okay. So, I, uh, so two questions. Uh, one, yes. how would you respond to people who say that you're not a, a real Muslim? And then two, uh, how do you decide what is 
correct Islam as opposed because obviously, uh, you know, people who who do follow these things, who do, who do follow, say, uh, Hadith, would say yeah. that, uh, just like these commenters, that you don't really represent Islam, that you only represent your own beliefs. Uh, all right. <clears throat> uh, yes, I see that something uh, has fallen down there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my, my son came downstairs and he didn't fix it when he went. Yeah, I see that. All right. Um, I, I wait for you and then I'll, <laughs> I will explain. Well, I, I don't know if you hear me well. All right, great. Yeah, yeah, I have wireless headphones, so. Uh, uh, no problem. No, no, yeah, no, very no, good. No worries. Yes, okay, yes. Uh, actually, I'm not a Quranist, okay, because uh, usually when I reject fabricated hadiths, people, uh, you know, right away think that I'm Quranist. No, I have had debates with Quranists as well. And uh, I reject any hadith that goes against Quran, okay? And then Quran says, uh, you know, uh, stoning was an act of uh, pagans. Okay, there are many verses in Quran that uh, Allah says to His prophets. Even Prophet Abraham, his father says that if you do this, I will stone you to death. Yeah. So Quran uh, mentioned that it was a practice of uh, pagans, and nowhere in Quran says that we have the right to, you know, uh, stone uh, a human being. And in fact in my understanding of quran we have no right to judge people at all the ultimate judge is god we have no right to punish people even if there is a punishment it has to be reversible okay so everything goes against quran that's why i reject and then another thing is that bukhari himself he rejected nearly six hundred thousand hadiths okay nearly six hundred thousand hadiths so just because Bukhari told me that this is authentic, I'm not going to follow because uh, because in the judgment day, I am going to be questioned, not Bukhari. Bukhari, of course, he will be questioned as well why you fabricated these hadiths. But I'm also going to be uh, questioned that why I follow that because God gave me the brain, okay? And I am guilty also for my action. So that's why I have to decide as well that no, 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 this doesn't, this goes against Quran, that's why. I don't care who told me, okay? This goes against Quran and the main book is Quran. That's why I, uh, for example, a hadith says that uh, Prophet Muhammad said, the pleasure you get in forgiveness, you never get it in revenge. That goes in line with Quran, okay? Because Quran teaches me many verses that forgive people, okay? But a hadith that says he stoned people to death, okay? That goes against Quranic teachings and that's why I reject that. So I'm not a Quranist, okay? And as I said, is Quran is the main scripture and I follow that first. And then after that, the hadiths that follow Quran. Yes, brother. Yeah, so John Scott said, what if Hadith agree with the Quran? So in that case, you would follow those Hadith, correct? Yes, I said this, yes. If it agree with, uh, and it has to, of course, make sense as well, okay? that uh, it goes in line with Quran, yes. Excellent. So, uh, you know, we, in a, a future conversation, we might have some uh, additional conversation about whether that, that um, whether your stated beliefs are in, internally coherent, uh, whether you can really uh, get to something that resembles Islam by uh, following the Quran first and then uh, hadith that don't contradict it. Uh, but that's not the subject to today. So for today, I'm happy to take you, uh, your position as it is. Uh, you know, if people say, if people want to say whether they're Muslim or Christian or otherwise, they want to say that perfect Dawah doesn't represent Islam. Well, whatever. He still represents his own, own views. And yes, exactly. we're going to be exactly. talking about the, the Bible today. Uh, so I don't really care if, if you know, he represents the uh, correct Islamic position or not, I, I'm happy to have conversations with people where they're at. So you want to open with uh, a, a bit of a presentation, if you will, uh, at least a monologue on why you believe that the Bible is corrupt. As I said that, um, yes, I'm not here, really, believe me, I'm not here to disprove, uh, you know, as I said, I'm not the disproving uh, Bible, as long as you don't follow those verses, okay, I'm happy, okay. And I said, why? Uh, because those commands are not, 
uh, you know, commands of all, you know, most merciful and forgiving God or all loving God. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> they were, uh, you know, and they entered, unfortunately, Bible and Torah. And they tried to enter it in Quran, but they couldn't. That's why they came up with, uh, I'm not going to, to every details, only these verses, okay, about stoning a human being, okay, is not uh, words of God. And unfortunately, um, yes, it entered in those books. And I'm, as I said again, I'm happy that no Christian follow it today. Okay, that's great. Uh, so, uh, if I understand what you're saying correctly, is that you find things that you view as immoral in the Bible, and and that is why you believe that it is corrupt. Is that correct? Yeah, I just say this example one, okay, stoning a human being was practiced by pagans and it was their, uh, you know, their rules, their laws. It w wasn't uh, God's laws. And Jesus, peace be upon him, stopped a human being from being stoned to death. He said the one who has no sin must throw the first stone. He didn't say that this uh, woman is innocent, okay. He was the one who didn't have any sin. And if he believed in stoning uh, people, he should throw the first stone, but he didn't. So he saved that poor woman. And I believe in that story. So I believe that uh, uh, God didn't want uh, and never wanted that we uh, follow those barbaric practices. Okay. And this is a good evidence that um, Jesus stopped that stoning that uh, he uh, he didn't give this command. And these commands were, uh, you know, entered in Bible and Torah, unfortunately. I don't know if uh, people were stoned to death <laughs> throughout the history of Christianity. I haven't checked that, but um, I'm happy that nobody followed them today. Yes. Yeah, so uh, you're, so, so what you're saying is that your, your authority on determining that the, the Bible is corrupt is that it contains uh, immoral commands. And you gave one example. There are probably other things in the Bible that you yes, yes, object definitely. to as well. Mm -hmm. And I assume that you're defining morality as what the Quran uh, teaches. Is that correct? Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. So how would you respond to the uh, to the the argument that the Quran affirms that the Bible is authoritative. Uh, yes, actually, uh, this was uh, something that I also um, have had a discussion with uh, another uh, brother as well. Uh, Allah, uh, you know, meant that what has been revealed by him in the Bible and Torah, yeah? So people must follow those commands of Allah. Definitely he wasn't, <clears throat> he never meant that people must follow, uh, you know, corrupted parts like, uh, you know, the commands uh, that was like a stoning adulterers uh, because Jesus, peace be upon him, himself was against it and he stopped it. So definitely God, uh, you know, never meant that, uh, you know, um, anybody should follow those commands, okay? So, uh, and the Quran says uh, also about good Christians and Jews that they are in the rank of, uh, you know, righteous people and they will be rewarded, they will go to heaven, okay? Because of their prayers, their good deeds. So in, uh, I have to say like this, that in Islam, the Islam that I know, okay, you don't go to heaven for your beliefs. You go to heaven for your actions or you go to hell also for your actions, your bad actions. So whether, whether you are a Muslim uh, like ISIS and Taliban, you will be punished okay, for your bad actions. Or if you are a Christian or Jew or atheist even and you do good deeds, okay, Allah says that uh, your reward is, uh, you know, with him. Okay, so your action is important in, in the Islam that... Uh, not I'm not the only one. Okay, we are millions. Thanks God, we are millions that believe in that. That your action is important, not your beliefs. And I can give a good uh, example. Chapter one hundred seven, verse one through seven. Uh, okay, Quran explains as well, and there are other verses of Quran. I, let me uh, maybe I can read so that uh, people see that it is documented. 
not uh, just I say from my own, you know, beliefs. Is that okay? Absolutely. So uh, give me one second. I'll pull that up on screen. You can read from, you know, your, your personal copy or whatever, but I'll also pull yes, it up. On yes, yes. The audio. Yes, I will uh, pull up. Yes. So you said uh, 107 versus 1 through 7? Yes, you? yes. Quran says, have you seen the one who denies the religion? That is the one who repulses the orphan and does not encourage the feeding of the poor. So woe to those who pray, yet are not mindful of their prayers. Those who only show off and refuse to give even the simplest aid. So Allah put here in these verses, put those uh, Hippocrates, those who just show off and, you know, show that they are uh, Muslims, but they don't give charity. They don't, they, uh, you know, refuse to help others. So they are the same as those who reject, uh, you know, the religion. And uh, uh, let me read for you uh, other verses uh, from uh, Quran. Right. Chapter 49, verse 13. <clears throat> oh, mankind, here is not talking Quran to about, uh, you know, Muslims. It say, oh, mankind, indeed, we have created you for male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing Allah uh, is aware. So uh, here, it doesn't matter what you believe is talking about uh, the entire mankind. Okay. And it says that uh, uh, the best of you is the most righteous one of you. So in, uh, there are many other verses that I could uh, give you that, uh, yes, uh, it is not about believing. It's about uh, mostly what you do in this world. Okay. So I, uh... In uh, 107, we saw a couple examples of what might be considered a good deed. And here in 49, it, it yes. just says, uh, you know, be righteous, more or less. Yes. Uh, so since your example was stoning people uh, for committing adultery, or let's just say stoning people for committing crimes uh, in general, because I, I assume you would agree that adultery is a crime, uh, mm -hmm. what would your Quranic justification be? Be for saying that is wrong uh, okay to e execute people for crimes okay execute people for crimes so let me uh, read for you uh, from Quran okay just a second please okay yes uh, chapter 16 verse 61. If Allah were to punish people immediately for their wrongdoing, he would not have left a single living being on earth, but he delays them for an appointed term. And when their ter uh, time arrives, they cannot delay it for a moment, nor can they advance it. So, and there are many other verses that I could uh, uh, show you that Allah says to his own prophet, uh, prophet Muhammad, that you just preach and their account is on us, oh Muhammad, you are not going to force anybody to anything. So Allah, uh, and, and, and we know that there is repentance uh, opportunity in Islam, okay, that uh, people have the right to repent, and Allah says that no sin is bigger than my uh, forgiveness. So I have the right, as I became an atheist, but Allah gave me the time so that I learned and I changed and I converted to Islam. So the time, when the time is off, is Allah's decision, not your decision, not my decision, not anybody's decision. Is that okay now? I see you because it's, you are very little. Though. If we can um, uh, remove the screen, I appreciate it very much. I like to see yeah, you when I talk yeah. to you. Yeah. Yes, okay, like this is better. Yeah, so, so in my view that uh, I have no right to judge you because I might be, uh, as we know, many people are also getting punished uh, unjustly. They are innocent. They can be even executed, uh, you know. So I am not going to punish you and be guilty in the judgment day, uh, you know, and find out later that, oh my God, I killed uh, uh, an innocent people uh, person. I punished uh, a wrong person. So, and then even the scale of the punishment, we don't know. So, 
uh, I say that we uh, have to uh, rehabilitate people and we have to get rid of the source, the source that guide people to bad deeds. Okay. Uh, let me read for you uh, from uh, the closest companion of uh, Prophet Muhammad Ali Radiullah. Okay. That what he was saying to his, uh, uh, sorry, uh, to his own governor of uh, uh, sorry, oh, no. to his own governor of uh, Egypt. Okay, yes, he was saying to his own governor of Egypt that Malik, the worst people for you must be those who try to reveal people's mistake and sins because people make mistakes and sins and the governor is the one who must cover them do not try to find people's mistakes because your duty is to fix the problems that leads people to bad deeds and it is god's right to judge people not yours cover people's mistakes and sins as much as you can so that god covers yours okay so there is a source that guide people to bad deeds and our duty is to get rid of that source okay for example poverty is a great factor that guide people to bad deeds so a good governor a good government okay should get rid of the source which is for example poverty is uh, i can give you a great example of my home country actually i'm uh, you know, Iranian originally, okay, and I'm living in Sweden as refugee. So, uh, 40, four years ago, we had crimes, we had bad deeds in our country uh, because of a dictatorship. We made a revolution, and a dictator, a worse dictator, an ISIS guy came and took the power in Iran, and uh, the uh, economy is collapsed, and uh, poverty uh, is at the highest. So, crimes has increased a thousand times okay so it doesn't mean that uh, you know uh, people became bad it is the system a more satanic system took the power and guided people to bad deed as quran says satan guides uh, uh, spread poverty among you and lead you to immorality so for me the former government was a satanic government and the current government is much more satanic government that's why people have become worse and they do more bad deeds. So the, it is not their fault. According to my understanding, uh, there is a force that guide them to bad deeds. So uh, we have to get rid of the source, not to punish, uh, you know, uh, people. We have to get rid of the disease, not the patient. Okay, uh, if I want to put it in this way. So the the verses that uh, you cited seem mm -hmm. to. If we're interpreting them the way that you are, would seem to suggest that there shouldn't be any penalty for any crime. That, no, any uh, crime. No. Uh, so is, is that actually, so let me clarify here. Do you think yes. that's the way that society should run? Or are you just saying from a religious perspective, there are, aren't, uh, is no penalty? So, because there's two different things, right? There, there's the yes. practical aspect of how you set up a society, and then okay. there's the the religious implications, uh, the internal eternal implications. So, yes. are you saying that, as far as your religion is concerned, there's no penalty, uh, you know, no immediate penalty, uh, i.e., you have to, until you die to repent uh, yeah. for your sins, but you know, maybe from a civil perspective, there should still be laws. Okay, there should be laws, okay, but as I said that uh, we are not God to judge people, okay, so uh, we have to, first of all, we have to get rid of the source, why this person did this, as Ali Radiola said also, people make mistake, okay, intentionally or by mistake, so our duty is to get rid of the source, and we have to rehabilitate people, we have to get help them to see why they can come back to the society later, and they can be good citizen. As I said, I would maybe, I would done something wrong when I was uh, 25. Let's say I would kill somebody and then I would ex be executed and God would tell me uh, why you did it. Uh, I would say if I uh, had the chance to uh, continue to live, I would change and I would become a Muslim. I would become a good citizen, okay? So uh, God has given us this opportunity to to learn and change and uh, that verse also was saying that if he want to punish us for our bad deeds he would 
uh, you know, get rid of entire humanity because we are all sinners, okay? But he give us the time so that we learn, okay? And we change. So as I said, the, the, sorry, the penalty should be reversible, even if there is a penalty. It should be reversible because we might make mistake. The person might be not guilty even, okay? Or even if he's guilty, he might change and come back to the... So I see that you have a, a verse here that we can go through that verse also, if you would like to. Yeah, yes, uh, we'll do that in just a, a second. Um, yes. But what you have described uh, sounds a lot like the, the Christian belief. I have heard it many times. Sorry, I interrupt yes. you, but I have heard it many times. And I have said to my uh, Christian brother, uh, Martin from South Africa, that he's always on my channel. I have told him that I am Christian, I am Jew, I am Muslim, I'm Buddhist. Wherever there is something nice, good teachings, okay, I am that one, okay? So if there is a bad teaching somewhere, I reject it wherever it is, from whomever it is. If it's a good teaching, I follow it, you know? Yes. Yes, so direct challenge to what you just said here, uh, Surah 5, verse 33. Indeed, okay. the penalty for those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and spread mischief in the land is death crucifixion, yes. cutting off their hands and feet on opposite sides, or exile from the land. This is a disgrace for them in this world, and they will suffer a tremendous punishment in the hereafter. So this seems to be prescribing uh, a, a variety of punishments that are not reversible, because you, you just said that punishment should be reversible, including yes. the death penalty for okay. certain kinds of crimes. So how is this consistent with what you just said? All right. Uh, sorry, brother. This is, uh, I, I know that you might not agree with me, okay? But uh, please, uh, you know, please just try to understand, okay? That this verse, okay? If you know language, language, uh, 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 the grammar of language, um, you know, I don't know how to put it for you, is that this is a statement, okay, that, it doesn't, uh, for example, if I say, uh, sorry, I forgot your name, my brother, uh, your name. Thaddeus. Sorry? Thaddeus, yeah? Sorry, Thaddeus. If I told you, Thaddeus, uh, you have to uh, drink this medicine because, for example, you are sick. You have to drink this medicine, okay? This is a statement. This is not an order, okay? This is, if you don't drink, it means that you get sick or whatever. But if I say you must drink this medicine, this is the grammar of English. It means that this is an order from me. Wherever Quran gives order, he say, all Muslims, all believers do this, fight, okay? Fight is a verb, order verb, okay? To fight is not a verb, uh, sorry, order. It's just, a, you know, it's, it's just a verb. So here Quran says, Indeed, the penalty for them is this and that, okay? It doesn't say Muslims will do that, okay? But here, look, who does that? Chapter 7, verse 124. Frau says, I will certainly cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides, then crucify you all. Chapter 20, verse 71. He said, Frau, have you believed in him before taking my permission? He is surely your great one, who has taught you magic. So I will cut off your hands and feet from alternate sides, and I will crucify you on the trunks of palm trees, and you will come to know which of us is greater in retribution and more lasting. So uh, I think it's also 2649. Frau said, you accepted the word of Moses even before I granted you the leave to do so. Surely he is your uh, chief who has taught you magic. Soon shall you come to know. I shall cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides and shall crucify you all. So these are what pagans and what Frau, Frau was doing. So if you don't follow God's command, it's like we say that you live by sword, you die by sword, okay? So if you don't follow Allah's or God's commands, somebody will do that to you, okay? Because of your actions, all right? And that's not Muslims who do that. This is uh, what your own people do that. For example, if I say that, uh, <clears throat> oh, um, 
if you uh, use drugs, okay, for example, uh, people use drugs, the government says that if you use drug, you will get sick uh, or you might die from drug. And if we catch you, we put you in jail. So it is not, it is a statement that that drug uh, that you use will, uh, you know, harm you. It doesn't mean that we are going to harm you because of that drug. The only thing here is the punishment is here after. Allah says, after these, those who uh, do not follow the command of God, after they die also will be punished. The punishment here is uh, crucifixion, you know, all these uh, bad deeds that they were doing to each other. Like I say always, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, stopped. Uh, I, when I debate this atheist, I say, um, you know, uh, Christianity stopped Romans and Greeks from all those terrible acts they were doing, crucifying people, they were putting gladiators in stadium, slaughtering each other and so on. So these acts were uh, by these pagans and if they don't follow Jesus' uh, uh, commands or Allah's commands, uh, uh, so they will, you know, live in this world that somebody, uh, you know, do such things to them. But if they follow these commands, then definitely they will live in a peaceful and loving world and none of these things happens to them. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we do, so the, I went to the first one that you uh, talked about, 7124. Uh, this is, is Pharaoh speaking, so you're correct. Yes. But Pharaoh yes. saying, I will cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, I do want to depress you on this, because though, because 533 isn't like just, uh, you know, a random statement by a pagan or something. It's given in in the context of Cain uh, killing his brother, uh, killing Abel. Uh, and, and then Allah says that I have given this decree in response to the mm -hmm. what Cain did. So it seems to me... Uh, and it, it specifically says we ordained, and so we being Allah, we ordained this for the children of Israel that whoever takes a life unless as a punishment okay. for murder or mischief, it is well be as if they killed all of humanity. And then it goes on and says, indeed, the penalty for those who wage war against Allah and his messenger is death. And it seems to me that Allah is giving a decree uh, about the death penalty for certain crimes and okay. he says that this is a disgrace for them in this world so it doesn't seem to be about the, their spiritual outcome okay. uh, it seems to be to me that allah has decreed this particular command which okay. to be clear with uh if allah decrees a death or if god the true god decrees a death penalty for say murder uh, i'm okay with that but it's inconsistent so I'm not arguing that Islam is false because Allah decreed this, but it's inconsistent with what you said, where you're saying that if a command like this, if a command like a death penalty for certain crimes is found in scripture, that means that scripture is corrupt. No, so no, I'm no. not seeing the difference between no, no. Sorry. this verse in the Quran and what you said is your reason for believing that the Bible is corrupt. Okay, sorry, uh, I have to uh, say this, okay, that uh, is not just because uh, I said that that uh, was act of uh, pagans, they were stoning uh, adulterers, that's why, uh, you know, I say that Allah would never allow us to follow their practices and their commands, and I said what I, uh, you know, explained for you, because it doesn't say all Muslims crucify people, it says that their penalty uh, you know, it is in reality there, what will happen to them, okay, uh, is this, and I explained that who does that, okay, if you were a Muslim, my brother, if you were a Muslim, I would ask you, <clears throat> did Frau follow Allah or Allah followed Frau, okay, so for me is that that was their, uh, uh, what is it, their practices, and, and Allah says that, uh, for example, if you go <clears throat> next uh, verse chapter 534 can you please um, <clears throat> rule down okay stop yeah. <clears throat> it says <clears throat> as for those who repent before you seize them then know that allah is all forgiving most merciful <clears throat> okay <clears throat> so now imagine that i catch you i'm fighting you brother and i catch you okay and you say that because it's before they repent before 
Have you said that, oh, yesterday I repent, okay? So I have to ask Allah, Allah, what shall I do? Shall I crucify this person or not? Because he said he, uh, he repent yesterday. I don't know that you have repent, you are saying the truth. So what I'm going to do, this is uh, about the, the second part of the verse before that there hereafter they will be punished also because of what they were doing they were fighting allah and his commands okay <clears throat> so if i because we know in uh, quran the rules for <clears throat> you know for the <clears throat> sorry the prisoners of war is to be merciful to feed them uh, <clears throat> and to compensate them to release them there is no any single command that we have the right to uh, you know, execute or, you know, crucify or whatever the prisoners of war. So this command is uh, about those who also, the next verse is about those who have really repent before they get caught and Allah will forgive them. So the punishment will hereafter will be uh, removed from them. Okay. <clears throat> so this uh, verse clearly says that uh, I cannot decide that you repent yesterday or you didn't repent yesterday. So I cannot decide that. So Allah cannot put something on me that I uh, am not aware of. Okay. Only he is aware of. And you can lie. You say that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I repent yesterday. Okay. <clears throat> so you see that uh, really. Uh, and then the verse about uh, an eye for an eye. Can you please uh, bring it? I will explain for you that one as well. Okay if uh, it's uh, possible. Uh, well, actually, but, but I want to make a comment on this verse <clears throat> before we go on. Yes, yes, uh, please. Th verse 34 actually enhances <clears throat> my point because, yes, you said that uh, that people have the opportunity to repent, but it says, as for those who repent before you, seize them, <clears throat> you. Yes. So okay. You are the ones giving this these penalties. Okay. Uh, so it does prescribe that... Uh, potentially prescribe that people who repent of their crimes uh, okay. before they are executed, okay. that they are allowed to go free or they're at least have a, you know, they aren't put to death at, at the very mm -hmm. least. Okay. But what about as for those who don't repent? Uh, okay. Well, when you seize them, it seems to me that this penalty applies. Um, all right. That is how I would read the verse. Okay, yes. Um, all right. Let uh, let me see. Um, I have to say that <clears throat> if you go to chapter, uh, I can read for you chapter 3, verse 7, that Allah says how to understand, uh, you know, verses of Quran, because <clears throat> uh, uh, there are verses that are unspecific verses of Quran, and how uh, Allah says only Allah and those firm in knowledge understand the unspecific verses of Quran, Okay. Uh, yes, you are there, yeah, chapter 3, verse 7. So Allah says that only those and firm in knowledge, uh, Allah and those firm in knowledge understand the true meaning of unspecific verses of Quran. How they know that, the, uh, you know, the those who are firm in knowledge, they put verses beside each other and they take the true interpretation of that verse 533, okay? And we know that <clears throat> uh, prisoners of war, okay, uh, we have no right to harm them. Even uh, there are hadiths that uh, uh, when Prophet Muhammad in the Battle of Bad so that his uh, uh, his uh, followers they have uh, tied uh, enemies' uh, hands and draw, uh, drawn them. He got angry with them, said that open their hands, uh, treat them well, feed uh, them uh, with equal mouth, and uh, any prisoners who. <clears throat> you know, uh, teach 10 Muslim reading or writing will uh, go free. And Quran also mentioned that uh, either compensate, uh, <clears throat> sorry, compensate them or set them, uh, keep them until the, the war lay down. So <clears throat> as I said, it is not one verse Quran. If you take one verse of Quran, you might not understand it. You have to put all verses of Quran together and get, you know, <clears throat> the, the true uh, understanding of such a verses. Uh, and I explained for you that uh, <clears throat> to me is that uh, Farao does that. Those uh, barbaric acts are acts of Farao and pagans against each other. Uh, <clears throat> we have no right to punish people. Uh, so uh, this is up to you if you accept it or you reject it. I have explained. Uh, anybody who would like to accept my explanation, uh, welcome and 
Anybody who wants to take your explanation and understanding, also welcome. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. So uh, I guess the question is here, uh, you know, <clears throat> Surah 3 verse 7 does say that people will misinterpret the Quran. Yes. Um, but it, how do you know that you're the one who is interpreting it correctly? How do you know that you're not the one who yes. is misinterpreting it? I understand. <clears throat> yeah, because it says those whose heart is, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, those whose those with deviant hearts, okay? <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> those who are bad people, okay? So obviously, <clears throat> I'm trying to, uh, you know, follow. And then it says that <clears throat> the, the precise verses of Quran are the foundation of Quran. So when Quran, Allah says the most merciful and forgiving God, so these are not, uh, you know, anything... Uh, uh, unspecific verse. They are foundation of Quran. So um, the most merciful and forgiving God doesn't punish uh, somebody who didn't understand, didn't get the message, so barbaric, you know, to crucify and follow <clears throat> the command of Frau, okay? Follow the command of those barbarians like uh, crucifying people, stoning people, and so on. So Allah is not going to command us to do the same way Frau was doing, okay? So uh, I'm not the one who is uh, misinterpreting that. Uh, it is those who, you know, go against the foundation of Quran, which is the most merciful and forgiving God. Uh, and uh, Prophet Muhammad said also as well, the pleasure you get in forgiveness, you never get it in revenge. If you go again to that uh, <clears throat> verse chapter uh, about uh, an eye for an eye. Uh, let me, uh, maybe I can. Uh, uh, do you know the bring... number offhand? I, if not, I can look it up. No, I, I will. I will. I will bring it for you. I. Uh, okay. Here is uh, <clears throat> chapter five forty five says, <clears throat> and we ordained for them during a life for a life, an eye for an eye, a tooth, a nose for a nose, an ear for an ear, a tooth for a tooth and for one's illegal retribution. But whoever gives up his right as charity, it is an expansion for him. And whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, then it is those who are the wrongdoers. Chapter 42, verse 40. And the retribution for an evil act is an evil one like it, but whoever pardons and makes reconciliation his reward is due from allah indeed he does not like wrongdoers chapter 3 verse 134 who spend in the cows of allah during seas and hardship and who restrain anger and who pardons the people and allah loves the doors of good chapter 42 verse 43 and whoever is patient and forgives indeed that is of the matters required determination. Chapter 16, verse 126. And if you punish, punish with an equivalent of that with which you were harmed. But if you are patient, it is better for those who are patient. And there are more verses that I can read that Allah teaches us to forgive. Okay. And I said also, Prophet Muhammad said, uh, <clears throat> uh, what is it? The pleasure you get in forgiveness, you never get it in revenge. Okay. So, we are instructed to forgive and not follow the barbaric acts of uh, uh, fraud. Okay, my brother. I hope uh, yeah. so, I made so it clear. I'm going to go back to the, the first one there, uh, 545. Uh, <laughs> this this one is very applicable to the, the discussion that we're having here because we are ordained for them in the Torah, uh, <clears throat> yes. a life for life, an eye for an eye, <clears throat> etc. Yes. Uh, so Allah says that he ordained in the Torah yes. that there is the death penalty for killing someone. And yep. then you are telling me that the Bible is corrupt because it has a death penalty for killing someone. Okay. No, no, I didn't say that. Okay, my brother. I didn't say that uh, about that. I said that <clears throat> the, uh, specifically about the, uh, what is it, the stoning adulterers. Okay, so this is totally different. Okay, because in Quran... Uh, stoning adulterers, uh, sorry, uh, killing adulterers is absolutely uh, uh, against Quran, okay? And then another thing is that if you put this in context, okay, because, uh, for example, uh, uh, what is it? The, the, he ordained uh, in the Torah until 
uh, that part which is uh, uh, equal uh, retaliation. And then he added, you know, it took him 2000 years to add that passage, but whoever uh, give up his uh, right uh, as a charity, it will be uh, autonomous uh, for them. Okay, so Allah uh, encourages us, even though somebody kills somebody from you, he encourages you to forgive because if you forgive, Allah will remove your sins. Allah will reward you because he knows that people make mistakes, people do bad deeds. But if you put it in context, my brother, 3,500 years ago, people were living in in uh, tents. They were living in villages. They didn't have jails. They didn't have rehabilitation center. So their punishment should be immediate, okay? And what they were doing was that if you took my eye, I would kill you, your family, your tribe, okay? So it's a lot of slaughters and, you know, uh, things like this was happening and Allah says and those who do not judge by what Allah has revealed it means that if you take my eye if I go and kill you okay I am one of those wrongdoers and I will be punished this is the minimum right I have the, the, sorry the maximum right I have is that to take your eye or if you killed my brother the maximum right I have is to kill you and that's as, as I said, was about the time, those time, past time, but not today. Today, Allah, we have to follow the parts that Allah says, if you forgive, Allah, you know, uh, rewards you. Allah uh, replace your sins with, uh, you know, with rewards. So Allah wants us to, because they didn't absolutely, we understand that they didn't have this opportunity to uh you know to put people in jail and so so um if you put them all beside other verses of quran then you you know that people have the right to repent and we have to give them the right to repent to learn okay so allah says that no sin is bigger bigger than his uh you know forgiveness so even if you kill somebody and we know that many of uh, prophets uh uh, companion, they were enemies of Islam, they killed Muslims, and then later they repent, and they and they were not executed, okay? They even were martyrs, they became Muslims, and they fought for Islam, yes. <clears throat> uh, this is amazing. Uh, so, sorry for this quick aside, but I have to address <clears throat> yes. this from the audience here. Uh, and OG, which I assume to be a Muslim based on his comments, he says this guy is not a representative of Islam. Christian okay. apologists pick him to use him as a punching bag. He has zero Islamic okay. knowledge. And okay. then when I asked OG, uh, I asked OG to have a conversation with me or find someone who is willing to have a conversation with me. Uh, his response was, you never join reputable platforms. Stop it. Okay, OG, look. Uh Sorry, sorry, my brother, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, my brother. <clears throat> this is what I need also help from you and my uh, Christian brothers and sisters. They all have blocked me because they cannot, you know, stand. <clears throat> and they say my views are dangerous for their radical views, okay? <clears throat> and uh, uh, I would, I would uh, be more than glad if uh, people could call them like this uh, EF Dawa, uh, Dava wise, okay, they all uh, are very afraid of me, okay, they don't want to talk to me because I reveal their radical views and uh, please, uh, because the, I have uh, uh, clips on my channel as well that uh, they ran away answering my question. I have had debate with, uh, you know, uh, scholars as well. Uh, they just uh, remove me the moment they see that they cannot answer my questions. So one of the um, great things uh, to do is that to uh, ask these extremist Muslims like uh, EF Dawa and uh, Dawa Wise that why they are afraid of my views and why they, they block me, they cannot, uh, you know, uh, debate me. <clears throat> and I wish that I had a chance. I have even asked MDD, Modern Day Debate, that please uh, arrange a debate between me and Daniel Isis Jew, because I call him Daniel Isis Jew, okay? <laughs> you know, well, that Harigat Jew is a Persian surname. Harigat means um, truth. Jew means seeker. So his surname is true seekers, but I change it to uh, 
uh, ISIS seeker. He's a real, you know, uh, enemy of Islam. And uh, uh, I myself, as a Muslim, hate their religion. Okay, I'm a great enemy of their religion. All right. So if they would like to debate me, I go live every Saturdays on my channel, uh, or anybody can call them instead of going and debate them about was Jesus son of God or was he crucified or not. Ask them to debate me, please. Okay, just call in and ask them, push them that why they are afraid of me, why they are afraid of my views. Okay, if I'm wrong, then they can reveal me. Yes, they can just debate me and say that, okay, you are wrong here and there. You don't understand this word or that word or this verse or that verse. But why they are afraid of me? Why they block me? Yes, my brother. Yeah, uh, it's a great question. You know, I, I get Muslims in the comments all the time telling me how I need to, to go on EF Dawa. And uh, your, your experience is very similar to what a lot of other people have told me as well, that anyone who disagrees with them or, or has any degree of knowledge, they just get rid of from their show because they're not really interested in having conversations yes. again. Uh, to OG or anyone else who thinks that they can better represent Islam whenever, uh, or, you know, whatever other position you hold, my contact information is in the video description. Contact me and we can have that conversation. But until you do that, you have no right to complain about someone else not being a good representation of your beliefs because you don't have the guts to come defend what you believe. Thank you. <laughs> Another thing is, uh, uh, my brother, I have to say that this uh, Nadir uh, <clears throat> you had on your show, okay, uh, he is also quite radical. And I was very frustrated with him that uh, last time he had a sh uh, debate with a Christian on MDD, he was asking, uh, uh, you know, this uh, Matt and Aaron to join him, unite with him against false religion of Christianity. And it is disgusting because I say I rather see uh, uh, an atheist become a Christian than uh, be, uh, you know, be uh, an atheist. And he wants to unite with uh, atheists who, you know, they are stubborn like uh, a horse. Uh, because I was uh, debating him and I was saying what would convince you that God exists. He couldn't come with anything, I even said that if I uh, split the moon, will you believe that God exists? He he wasn't even accepting such a great miracle. Of course, I don't believe in uh, that uh, uh, anybody has split the moon. I don't believe that Prophet Muhammad has split the moon because it goes against against Quran. So anyway, but I told him that if I do that, okay, would you believe? Oh, uh, if you do that, why should I believe uh, that God did it? Can you imagine? How can I split the moon? If I do that, it means that God has done it. Either I am God or God has done it. Which power in this universe can split the moon and put it back? It is only God who can do that. So he was asking these stubborn people to unite him against uh, Christians, okay? Which I say that uh, I respect your uh, belief and I am happy that uh, you are not going to harm people, okay? As long as you don't do that, you will be rewarded in my belief. You will go to heaven, okay? And I want to unite with you, with my uh, Christian brothers and sisters against uh, radical Muslims. And he want to, unfortunately, unite with these atheists against uh, Christianity. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, you know, and I have asked him also to join my channel and let's have a uh, debate. He ran away always. He, you know, he doesn't show up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I've had similar uh, thoughts as that when a lot of times people are telling me as a, a Christian that I need to focus on destroying Muslims when they come up and talk to me. I need to make sure that they they see that islam is false and i always tell them that that is only half the equation and getting someone out of islam does absolutely no benefit to that person unless they actually become a christian i've gained absolutely nothing by converting converting a, a yes. muslim into an atheist uh 
so no, I, I, I would agree with you. If some, if a Muslim apologist or a Christian apologist is saying to atheists, let's team up and destroy this other religion, uh, then they are not doing what their religion should be encouraging them to do. Yes, exactly. Means. Yes, exactly. And let me uh, read something for you, my brother, uh, from Quran. Uh, uh, that's uh, very important, uh, I think. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, chapter uh, 3, verse 113, 14, 15 says that not all of them are alike. Of the people of the book are a person that stand for the right. They rehearse the verses, uh, verses of God all night long, and they prostrate themselves in adoration. They believe in God and the last day. They enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong, and they hasten in emulation in all good works. They are in the ranks of the righteous, and Whatever good they do, never will it be removed from them. And Allah is knowing of all uh, righteous. So I'm not going to, uh, you know, join anyone against my righteous uh, brothers and sisters in Christianity. Yes. Uh, so, OG, again, <laughs> he says, to me that I would get my feathers plucked on any reputable Islamic debate stream. So he resorts to they won't be fair. Look how they treat this heretic guest, LOL clowns. Uh, oh, gee, every Christian I have talked to who's tried to go on one of those shows has been treated on fairly. It's not just about what they how they treated perfect dawah unfairly. Mm -hmm. This is just what they do. They are only interested in having conversations with people who are ignorant so that they can humiliate them and make mm -hmm. themselves look better. This is how they run their channels. If they would be if they would be interested, not that I think they would, but if they would be interested in having a debate with me or a conversation with me on a neutral third party channel, then I absolutely would be willing to have that conversation. But just telling me that, oh, because you aren't on EF Dawa, you are a coward, while you are unwilling to even come to talk to me. You say that I'm pathetic, that I can't stand my own, and yet you won't talk to me. What does that say about you? All right, uh, sorry for the I, distraction. Sorry, no problem. Can I add something, please? Uh, <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, the thing is that, uh, uh, what is it, they haven't treated me at all because I have been on their channel maybe three times and every time two, three minutes and then they got rid of me fast as soon as they could, okay? But to, I have seen uh, Christians who call and they talk to them one hour, okay? Because to Christians, they can easily say that, oh, you are a kafir, okay? So uh, you cannot, you cannot, uh, you know, uh, fight them as long as the, they uh, can label you as kafir, okay? But me, they cannot do that. That's why they are afraid. And I uh, appreciate if you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, arrange a debate between me and them on your channel, okay? Because their channel, they don't allow, all right? So any of this, uh, uh, like this OG, I'm definitely sure that he doesn't know anything about Islam uh, because there was a guy from India, he... Uh, he uh, was also writing me that, oh, you are uh, something, I, I don't know, not, not Muslim and so on. So I urged him to uh, call in my channel. When he called on my channel, he hadn't read even Quran properly. And he realized right away and he ran away. Yeah, because he even didn't know that stoning adulterers is not in Quran. He even didn't know this much. OK, and he was going to debate me. So there are unfortunately such a people that um, exist. And uh, they just can do behind, you know, scene and say, oh, you are not representing uh, Islam. As uh, as fast as they, you know, they confront me directly, they uh, they get, uh, you know, exposed. 
Yeah, so uh, this will be the last comment. Uh, who wants to debate a dude without knowledge like this fake Muslim? If he doesn't have knowledge, he'd be a very easy debate opponent. You, you should be able to crush him. So why don't you step up to the plate? Maybe your uh, apologists aren't willing to do it. Maybe it's beneath them or whatever. But it's clearly not beneath you because you're wasting your time on this stream complaining about it. So clearly it is not a waste of your time to have these conversations in text. So why don't you just go ahead, email me, we'll arrange a, a formal debate or a conversation, whatever you prefer. And I'm not a debater, I've never done a debate, yet I'm willing to take on a debate from any Muslim apologist that you wanna bring forward and perfectly fine with me because I am not afraid unlike your muslim apologists who just want to sit there screen their calls get rid of anyone who has knowledge and then talk about how great they are because they have humiliated people who called in and didn't have any knowledge yes exactly all right mm -hmm. uh getting back uh so uh super chat so normally i wouldn't take a off-topic comment but since it's a super chat uh, from oflamio uh, perfect dawah. Why did God send pro Prophet Joseph Smith after Prophet Muhammad? And uh, you don't have to answer that, but you can if you want. Uh, because I don't see very well. Can you please uh, uh, make the screen bigger if you remove the uh, the, the Quran uh, so that I can see the whole? Because I don't see the the screen. It's very uh, small. Uh, uh, so uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, like this. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Perfect. Abba. Why did God send Prophet Joseph Smith? I don't know Prophet Joseph Smith. After I said Prophet Joseph Mark. Smith is the founder of Mormonism. Ah, Mormonism. Okay. So, uh, sorry. I have to say that, uh, yeah, I don't believe that he was a prophet because I don't believe that any prophet will come after Prophet Muhammad. Uh, he brought the final message of God. Okay. So, I don't believe that he was uh, a prophet. Yes. And there are other prophets. Uh, many other prophets who claim that they are prophets. So I don't have to accept every single person who uh, uh, there is a prophet uh, now. Uh, he he has a uh, sorry. He has a, a website as well. The message something like this. He uh, he was an American guy who was uh, preaching that he's a new messenger and so on. So there are many uh, like these people who claim that they are messengers. So I don't have to, uh, you know, uh, say uh, yeah. about. It. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I only took that since it was a super chat. So thank you for that donation. Mm -hmm. So getting back to the original topic now. Uh, so you, you talked uh, a little bit about how, uh, you know, Allah was most merciful and most forgiving, uh, and that you know people should be given time to repent and whatnot. So what would you say uh, about shirk, which is sometimes classified as unforgivable in Islam? All right. Uh, actually, shirk is, uh, e because as I said, you have to uh, put all verses together. Shirk in Islam is not just, uh, um, you know, uh, pr uh, praying towards an idol or whatever. Shirk is, uh, uh, even a Muslim can be a mushrik when, the teachings are bad, okay? So as I said that in Islam, it's not about your thought, it's about your actions. And I read for you a, a, a verse of Quran that God is talking to mankind. It says, oh, mankind, okay? The best of you is the most righteous one of you, okay? So in the Islam that we uh, believe, okay, as I said, we are millions, that we believe in is that, uh, even if you are an atheist, you can go to heaven as long as you fight for humanity. You live like a human being and die like a human being. There are so many Muslims who live like an animal and die like an animal. There are Christians who live like an animal and die like an animal, any religion. And they will be, uh, you know, they will be punished for their actions in this world. And there are many atheists, Christians, Jews, or whatever, that live like a human being and die like a human being, and they are going to be rewarded. So it is not about your actions, uh, sorry, your beliefs, it's about your actions, okay, in Islam. So don't take one verse of Quran and think that uh, it is. So shirk is also again about that you would crucify people, you would stone people to death if you follow those you know, 
those stones that don't teach you anything. You would bury your daughters alive, okay, your daughter alive. So these are the, the action that God wants to take you from, uh, you know, these uh, shirk or these idols or whatever. Understand? So uh, as long as you do good deeds, you are saved in uh, my belief in in uh, the true Islam, and we are millions, okay, and we are going growing. We are growing and getting bigger and bigger. Yes. Your interpretation of Islam is the true Islam or not? I, I do agree with you, your statement there, and that more and more people are rejecting what could be called traditional Islam, um, that they're rejecting the idea uh, of these uh, violent teachings and whatnot. And I would agree from a practical standpoint that that makes the world a better place. Uh, so I support your efforts to talk to Muslims in that regard. Um, Thank you. My now, as far you. as their e eternal uh, soul, I don't think it puts them in a better place because I don't think that you're rewarded for good deeds. However, going with what you believe, uh, what is the benefit of being a Muslim then? If people are judged solely on their deeds and you know, someone who is, say, a Buddhist has just a good chance of, of going to paradise based on their good deeds as a Muslim does. What is the benefit of being a Muslim? All right. Yes. Uh, as I said, the best of you is the most righteous one. In reality, th this is not righteous. Uh, it says the, the one with the most taqwa in Arabic. <clears throat> taqwa uh, is, uh, from, for me, I uh, render it as uh, <clears throat> the one with most sacrifice. Okay, the one who sacrificed most for his own kind, that's the, uh, the highest, per as I said, also, uh, the more human uh, you, uh, like a human you live, okay, the better person you are. Because in nature, we are animals and uh, animal nature is selfishness that I care about myself. I don't care about anybody else. So if you give, for example, charity, if you take care of orphans and so on, if you do all these, these are sacrifices. So the more sacrifice you, you make, the better person you are in the sight of uh, God. So the benefit of, uh, first of all, who is a Muslim? Muslim is the one who follow his commands. And as I said, his commands is uh, to, to do good. I have to read uh, the verse of Quran. Let me see, sorry. I have to read the verse of Quran to show uh, to tell you uh, what I mean with that okay uh, sorry uh, have to find it um, okay I I, I I don't find it right now but uh, anyway Allah says that he just Allah orders only uh, justice okay and giving to relatives and doing good deeds okay so this is his uh, only commands. And as long as you follow these commands, even if you are not uh, believing in God, you are a Muslim, uh, okay? Because you uh, follow his commands. But uh, if you, uh, you know, you become uh, a Muslim like me, okay? You can get rid of the source of all bad deeds, okay? The, the bad deeds that guide people uh, sorry, the source that guide people to bad deeds, all right? And God wants us to get rid of that, uh, you know, that source, which we call it in Islam, we call it Satan, okay? And I uh, uh, say that Satan is the jungle system that we are living in, the jungle world that we are living in, uh, the world that 1% uh, of the world population, uh, they own $110 trillion, okay? And hundreds of millions of people live on one dollar a day, and that one percent, they don't stop there. They want to become richer and richer. That's why they produce drugs, they produce uh, weapons, they produce, uh, you know, uh, tobaccos, killing five million people. So this jungle system encourages people and allows people to become billionaires by killing other people. And those hundreds of millions of people who are living on one dollar a day, they also have to do a lot of bad deeds like selling their bodies, selling drugs and whatever to survive. So God wants us to get rid of this jungle and live in a world where we share everything with each other. We love one another. Okay. And in that world, 
uh, we will have we do not have bad deeds everybody will live like human being so to be a muslims uh, a muslim and believing in the final message of god the benefit is that uh, you get rid of this jungle and jungle system and uh, yes you create a, a perfect world for everybody okay so yes uh, this uh, it is a very deep discussion of course yes yeah yeah i don't want to divert too far from the topic but i, I think that this is connected because uh, your argument against the bible is the, the moral teachings of it um but so you just stated that the, the best thing a, a human being can do is to sacrifice for other human beings i would agree with that statement um as truth apologetics as a very pointed question then uh, would that include someone like jesus who laid down his life or his friends. Uh, I mean, uh, okay, that's a different. Uh, uh, what is it? Believe that I respect your belief. Okay, and definitely, uh, I believe that Jesus was a prophet of God, and that's also uh, definitely he was the highest. Okay, among uh, the people because he also uh, sacrificed uh, everything. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> yes, so. Definitely, he was, uh, as I said, one of the highest, uh, 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 you know, human beings uh, 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 in the history. Yes. Uh, yeah. The, just one second here. I was writing a, a comment in the the chat to Kloklo. And it said, "Please email Sheikh Uthman Shabir Ali." Mansur, Muhammad, Hijab, etc. Uh, well, you know, I'd be happy to have a chat with any of them, but I mean, I'm being real here. They, they have way more subscribers and followers than me. I, I wouldn't go and say that they're afraid of me because they don't want to have a, a, a chat with me. They, I, in reality, and that, you know, my channel probably isn't worth their time. And, you know, my 16,000 subscribers doesn't compare very favorably to hijab's half million or whatever number he's up to exactly these days uh i wouldn't expect him to have a conversation with me but when i reach out to any muslim it doesn't matter whether they have you know a hundred thousand subscribers or whether they have a hundred subscribers and i have reached out to many muslims who have youtube channels and they all seem to decline having conversations with me so yeah, I'd, I'd be fine with having a discussion with Uthman or whoever else, but I, they're not that, and understandably, they're not that interested in talking with me, but now there are people who have many less subscribers than me. You know, most Muslims aren't that interested in having conversations with me. I, so can I, I have conversations with those who are willing to. Yes, sorry, I, I, I interrupt you. I, I think that, uh, okay, uh, I don't. I wouldn't like that you have conversation with such people about Christianity because, after all, uh, it's not in their business that uh, what you believe in. Okay, um, uh, whether you believe that Jesus was Son of God or God, <clears throat> or um, he was crucified or not, and so on. So it is uh, not in my business <clears throat> that you believe in that. As long as you are a good person, you are a human being. Okay, uh, I have to love you and uh, i have to be fair with you and uh, if they are unfair with you this is terrible from them and i would like to uh, you know correct them if <clears throat> if not possible then i have to somehow stop them <clears throat> from being unfair to uh, other people just because of their beliefs or disbeliefs okay so i don't think that it is very useful to have discussion with uh, maybe uh, Shabir Ali, uh, he's a more, you know, uh, knowledgeable person, but somebody like, uh, 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 what is it, is <clears throat> um, Ali Dawa or Muhammad Hijab, they are quite conservative and quite rude. Yeah, so, so just to be <clears throat> clear, I'm willing to have conversations with anyone, regardless of where they, they stand on the spectrum. Uh, you know, I have unfavorable opinions uh, of probably all of the, those people on your list but that's irrelevant i'm willing to have conversations with them regardless of how yes. uh unfair i think they are how 
horrific I think that I think their teachings are and whatnot. Uh, I don't expect them to want to have a conversation with me, but I do think that people that Muslims who are unwilling to have a conversation with me should not complain about me not having a conversation with hijab because hijab is not interested in having that conversation. Yes, yes. And uh, um, all right. Sorry, I just uh, would like to uh, say that uh, uh, unfortunately there are also Christians who um, I would like to have a conversation with, <clears throat> like, uh, <clears throat> you know, Sam Shamoon. Unfortunately, uh, when I hear him, he's talking to Muslims he all the time using stupid, stupid. That's very, very, you know, un-Christianity, uh, I, I can say, because <clears throat> uh, someone who understands is love one another understand that this is not the way you treat people, okay? And you just all the time. <clears throat> Once, actually, <clears throat> several years ago, I was having a discussion with Trinity Channel, and they loved also what I was preaching. They were encouraging me <clears throat> and so on. I contacted uh, Sham, uh, uh, Sham, uh, sorry, Sam Shamon, and uh, I said, I want to have a dialogue with you. And he said that, <clears throat> okay, uh, uh, did your your grave? I said, uh, no, no, I want to have a <clears throat> friendly discussion with you. He said, no, you are my enemy. I'm going to, uh, you know, bury you alive. And so I said, okay, okay, thank you very much. Uh, have a nice life. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, it is very nice to have a discussion with you, my brother. Okay. And I always uh, uh, look forward to have discussion with uh, people like you. And as I said, <clears throat> we are all brothers and sisters, especially that we all are uh, uh, from Abrahamic religions and uh, we have to unite against our common enemies, okay, wherever they are. <clears throat> In my case, they are uh, uh, extremist Muslims <clears throat> and I um, would like to have help from my uh, Christian brothers and sisters to fight them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I have conversations the way I have conversations, and some people appreciate this approach. Some people don't. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, tell someone who doesn't like the way I do things that they're wrong. Um, but I'll just tell them there are other channels you can follow if you you want that style of conversation. Here in my channel, I, I'm interested in having these friendly conversations. Sometimes I do open call-ins all the time. Sometimes people call in and are quite nasty with me and. and if someone is aggressive and, and mean like that, uh, I will return in kind. I, you know, I won't call them names, yes. but I won't let them push me around. I, I will tell them to to shut mm -hmm. up or I will yes. I'll, uh, mute them or something along those lines. Yes. But I much prefer having conversations like this. Yeah, thank you, my brother. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Uh, yeah, so getting back to the, the original conversation, uh, we were talking about um how uh, so i asked you the question why you uh, think islam is good and you kind of came up with uh, this answer that it helps you get away from the natural human mentality uh, i i agree with the uh with your, your statement about human beings uh, this is one of the core teachings of, of christianity in fact is that human beings are uh, utterly depraved that our, our natural state is in rebellion to God. Our natural state is is very sinful state, and I think that Islam, as well as all of the world's religions, other than Christianity, teach the same message in different forms. So, like the details are different, right? So. The answer that you just gave me that Islam is the system that can help you overcome your natural depravity is kind of the same answer that I would get from something else. Uh, now, they would have different uh, applications of that, right? They would tell you different things about how you achieve that, but they would say the same thing. You know, following yes. uh, Buddhism is how you achieve a better relationship with creation. They generally wouldn't use the term God uh, because. Buddhists generally are not, you know, monotheists or even polytheists. Yes. That they, some Buddhists even call themselves atheists. But same idea, though, right? That that following a, a system, a set of rules, helps you be a better person. Uh, Christianity teaches something different in that uh, there are 
So to be clear, there are rules prescribed by Christianity. There, it's not like just a free for all where that sometimes Muslims get at and they say, you know, you can just do anything you want, you can sin all you want and be a Christian. And that's not accurate. Uh, but the message of Christianity is that you, by your own efforts, cannot uh, overcome your sinful ways. You cannot become a, a better person. Uh, that you. We were intended to live in relationship to God, but we've broken that relationship. And now there's a, a boundary between us and God, a, a gap that we can't cross by our own efforts. We can only cross because God first enters into creation and does the work for us. So Christianity's message is not to place yourself, your trust in a system, uh, a set of rules, but rather to place your trust in God alone and the work that he has done. And that's how you achieve salvation, not by doing enough good deeds to overcome your bad deeds, because that's impossible, uh, because God is perfect. Yeah, I would like to uh, add to that something, <clears throat> that it's not only my personal, uh, you know, uh, uh, life, uh, that's, uh, that I'm a Muslim. As I said, that uh, I have learned that <clears throat> uh, the problem is in this uh, system, animal system, jungle system that we are living in, okay, that uh, allows people to uh, do bad deeds and become billionaires, okay. Uh, tobacco companies, for example, they produce uh, tobaccos and kill 5 million people a year because they become billionaires by uh, producing these tobaccos and drugs and weapons, all these things. So this is, um, I say that there is a system that make people, encourage people or make them or force them sometimes to do bad deeds, sometimes forcing people to do bad deeds. <clears throat> so. Uh, Islam came not to punish, uh, as I said, not to uh, get rid of the patient, but to get rid of the disease. The disease is this uh, system that we have to get rid of it. And <clears throat> this animal system that uh, uh, allows 1% <clears throat> of the world population to become, to get $110 trillion, 50% of the total capital of the, the, the planet <clears throat> and leave hundreds of millions of people in poverty. So Islam wants that, and I have been talking to Christians who say, oh, we believe the same, you know, Islam wants to e create an equal world, okay, where people share everything with each other and love one another, and there is no reason that you can do bad deeds, okay, you will not have the reason to, to do bad deeds, you will not have this opportunity to do bad deeds. So instead of getting rid of the patient, we get rid of, we want to get rid of the, the source, the, the disease, okay? So that's why I'm a Muslim and I am be more than happy if Christianity achieved that world faster. I, I know that uh, God wants me to follow Christianity or Judaism or whatever. Anyone who uh, achieved that, <clears throat> that uh, society, that world faster, okay, I would follow that. His audio is uh, so much, there was much a comment louder. that my audio was low, so I turned that up. Uh, let me get, let me know, guys, if, if it is better now. Uh, mm -hmm. It would have been greater to know that an hour okay. ago, but nonetheless, I've turned it up now. Uh, I obviously can't hear myself, uh, and when there's only one guest, then I have nothing to compare against, so it's really hard to determine the volume. I, and that's also my bad. I should have asked people at the start about that. Uh, so a uh, super chat from Jeffrey Anderson, uh, perfect yeah. Allah, did the prophets come to convince the rich to redistribute their wealth and condemn those who are greedy? Or was it a deeper purpose? If we all shared a uh, universal basic income, would we all go to Jenna? Um, uh, uh, yes, uh, okay. Look, uh, I have to put it in this way that um, uh, unfortunately, most Muslims don't uh, know what I know, uh, and I, I said there are millions of others who uh, we all know the same thing, but not a uh, majority of Muslims uh, know that. Uh, Islam came to uh, bring the final message of God, which is, um, actually I made a movie as well, I'm a film director, uh, Tedos. I made a movie about that uh, that final message. I went five different countries and then I went to Mecca. The final message of God is those dress that we wear in Mecca, 
uh, the, those two uh, piece of uh, materials, right materials, and the material is has to be cotton. So there, nobody is rich, nobody is poor. Everybody are equal there. No rich, no poor. Equality, absolute equality. And we say to God seven times that I accept it, I accept it. And we have to reject the opposite of the equality, which is inequality. And the symbol of that is Satan. And Quran explain who is Satan. Satan is the one who spread poverty among us. Okay. And I say Satan is not a um, you know entity. Satan is a system. And I gave in the beginning uh, an example that 44 years ago, there was a satanic system a government uh, in my home country, Iran. And after that, uh, the revolution came a more satanic system in power and send people to much more poverty and the uh, crime, everything has increased a thousand times. OK, so the system is satan. The system is satanic. This inequality is satanic and God wants us to live equal. So. <clears throat> Uh, Islam came to spread that message, the message of equality, that we get rid of this inequality, this unjust world, and, you know, share everything with each other, love one another, and uh, live, live like human beings, okay, and sacrifice for uh, each other. I hope that I have answered that. Uh, yeah, I, I think you answered that. Thank you very much, uh, Jeffrey, for the super chat. I, I very much appreciate people's support. Um, obviously not doing this for the, the money, but when people make those donations, uh, it means a lot to me, not because uh, of the money again. You know, I make enough money at my nine to five job, I'm, uh, but because of what it means for someone to take some of their hard earned money and uh, endorse the channel in that way. So I always super appreciate when people did that. Uh, so uh, getting back to the original conversation about- the I have to say something, of, sorry, uh, sorry, I interrupt yeah. you. I have to say also that uh, I appreciate to uh, help uh, nice people like you, my brother, okay? To support <laughs> you, all right? Excellent, with, excellent. With great, with great, great message and great job, yes. Uh, yeah, actually, so I did have a follow up to that last question um, about uh, whether the prophets came to spread uh, uh, equality and, and is what it specifically said, but say good uh, deeds or, or a good way of living in general. Uh, your answer seemed to be yes, that that's the primary message of Islam. Uh, now, most Muslims would would tell me that the primary message of Islam is monotheism, that you have to believe in, in one God only and everything else is secondary. So uh, I, I see you shaking your head now. Uh, that was going to be my question. Uh, yes. So no. you, you are definitely saying that then, that, no, that it is about yes. the, the moral teachings first. Yes. I say that the, the almighty God who has created this entire universe doesn't need me, I'm nothing in this universe, nothing, that I worship him, okay? He doesn't have lack of attention. Uh, he just want us, his creation, to live a better world, a better life, okay, in a better world. And he, all he has done has been to, to create that, uh, you know, beautiful life for us. Uh, but he doesn't want to do it himself. He wants that we do it by his guidance. He wants that we you know, follow his guidance. <clears throat> and this is this was the problem I had a few days ago with this Matt Dilahanti. <clears throat> uh, I was trying to ask him that what would convince you? And he was saying that, does your God want me to know him? Okay. And I was saying that, uh, I was trying to tell him that <clears throat> it's not about that you know him. He wants that you follow his command. And he got angry. He started to shout at me, you know, F words. I write uh, like a really, really like a, you know, crazy person. Uh, and then he uh, removed me from his channel because I was telling him, it's not if he, you know, he wanted to do that, he would show you, uh, you know, <clears throat> Miracle every day. He would uh, split the moon every day for you that, hey, Matt, I'm here. He, because um, he knows that, he knows that even if you believe in him, you are not going to follow his command because it's difficult for you, okay? That's why I was asking, uh, trying to ask you, what would convince you that God exists? If 
what would be the next uh, step if he you if you accept that he exists would you follow his command love one another love your neighbor as you love yourself would you follow that command if you follow it uh, you would follow it. you uh, follow just because he exists you would not follow it today so let's follow these beautiful commands okay whether he exists or doesn't exist all he wants is this that you follow these commands his beautiful commands his beautiful teachings yes yeah so let me push back on that actually because you said that uh, you know god doesn't need you uh, well then you kind of contradict yourself by saying that he wants you to follow his commands uh, christianity teaches that uh, god desires to have a relationship with us so if, I agree with the first half of that, where you you were, uh, you know, basically saying that the atheist arguments are stupid because God isn't interested in proving He exists. He doesn't care how many people believe that He exists. Um, however, if it's all about following rules, then I think it actually would be to God's benefit to make it obvious He exists because it would give people a stronger motivation to follow those rules uh, under the christian system where god desires to have a relationship with us that it is free and loving uh, it actually does make sense that he wouldn't like you know split the moon every day to use your example uh, to demonstrate that he exists because he doesn't want to compel people to follow him. He doesn't want to compel people to, to do what is right. He wants to have a loving relationship with us. And then we respond out of that love. Uh, so we don't do good deeds to win God's love. We do good deeds because we're responding to God's love in the Christian way of thinking. All right. I just uh, would like to add, not that uh, I, I have to say, um, not that he doesn't care or he he wants that we uh, believe that he exists because he wants that we follow his commands okay but uh he wants an on another side as, as well he wants to test us this is what i have understood that he wants to test our intelligence he wants to test our you know that uh, uh, our free will as well because that would be perhaps if he showed uh, every day you know that the test would be so easy you know that uh, he showed uh, such a miracle every day understand and even at the end he uh, i'm sure that uh, i know that there is a verse in quran uh, it is about i think prophet moses that uh, uh, he tried to prove them that god exists and then at the end people say okay god exists go with your god fix everything you know people say to him so at the end even if they uh so that god exists they they saw a miracle every day finally they wouldn't uh, follow those commands they would say okay you are god then fix everything yourself that's what god doesn't want he wants that we do everything but by his commands by his uh you know uh, guidance yes dear muslims before you go to sleep <laughs> uh can you please read it yeah sometimes uh, I we weren't going to respond to this, um, but sometimes I just pull up comments uh, for the audience's benefit. Uh, but I would agree with this statement from Rockstar that uh, uh, good advice for, for Muslims um, before you go to sleep in the quiet time of your room, ask Jesus if you are gone and you dine and rose in three days, show me. I would say the same to Christians, you know, if you are uh, kind of on the fence, ask God to reveal himself to you and say, if, if uh, Islam is the truth, please show me that. If Christianity is the truth, please show me that. If something else is the truth, please show me as well. Now, God is sovereign. He doesn't have to, to, to answer just because you ask, uh, but he often will. Uh, if you ask with a open heart and you're seeking the truth, God will reveal himself to you. Uh, so, uh, getting back to the conversation, so when I, when I brought up verses of the Quran that, uh, you know, some people who are Muslims would interpret the same way that I interpreted them, that appear, I understand. To, yes. prescribe, yes. Yet that appear to prescribe punishment uh, for wrong deeds and such, uh, you told me that I was misinterpreting them, which is it actually what I would say uh, about how you're interpreting the Bible. Uh, so, the original argument is whether the Bible is corrupted or not, 
And the Quran seems to say that Christians and, and Jews have the correct scripture, but they are misinterpreting it, that they are not following it properly, uh, which ironically, I, I think is what you are saying uh, about the Quran, that, that is the correct scripture that the people are misinterpreting it. Uh, so to the heart of the matter, why, uh, what would you say on that argument where I say that, you know, when, so to use your original example, and let me make it explicit here. So the, the stoning of someone who has committed adultery. Uh, this is prescribed in the Mosaic law. However, the, uh, the way the Mosaic law works isn't perhaps the way you think it works. That it is set up, uh, that there are multiple things going on in the Mosaic law. They're what we call ceremonial law, that they have a symbolic purpose. Uh, these are going to be the kinds of things that people often make fun of on the internet, like uh, not mixing two different types of fabric. Uh, but it, they're, they're about what we call ritual purity, generally. And then you have the moral laws. Those ones are pretty obvious. And that, that's what, uh, you know, in, in principle, this discussion is about. And then you have national laws for Israel because the Mosaic law is set to be both a moral law and it's set up as also the national law of Israel. So when you have something like those uh, prescriptions or specific penalties for specific crimes, those apply to the nation of Israel, which no longer exists. I know that there is a nation of Israel now, but it, as far as the continuation from the time of Moses uh, up until the, the fall of the, the state of Israel uh, would be when those laws would in principle be in play, uh, but they're also just not straightforward. You can't just straightforward read the text. That's not the way any of the Jewish people ever followed them. Uh, there, as far as like a civil law system, it's very much, uh, you know, we, we talk about how there's uh, 600 laws in, in the Old Testament. Well, 600 laws, barely any to, to follow a society, right? So they're set up to give you guiding moral principles on how to pass judgment. Uh, so when Jesus, at Jesus's time, some people are misinterpreting that law and they think that they're supposed to be stoning the woman who has committed adultery. They've gathered to stone her. And then Jesus corrects them by showing them what the law is really about. So the purpose of the law uh, is primarily to point you towards your sin problem point you towards the fact that you are living in that jungle state that you described, uh, that it, it calls attention to your natural state and, and brings you, and is intended to bring you towards repentance. It's a bring, intended to bring you back in line with God. It's not intended to be a person does X, punishment is Y type thing, uh, like the way a civil law works. Uh, so my response is that you are misunderstanding how the biblical laws work, uh, and Jesus provides the corrector, and of course Jesus is the exemplar for Christians, among other things. He's our perfect example to follow. Uh, uh, I said that uh, I'm not going to much argue, uh, argue on that, because uh, I, I said from beginning, uh, even I'm here to say that uh, I'm trying to argue against those extremist Muslims who try to, uh, you know, uh, it has happened many times and say, look, look, uh, uh, this stoning adulterers is uh, scribed from uh, God. That's why you find it in Torah and Bible. And I tell them that how come? In other cases, you say that those books are corrupted. And now here, when you cannot prove this uh, verse in Quran, you refer to something that you say it is, you know, corrupted. That's why I was trying to say, I'm, and I'm happy that you don't follow. If you were following them, then yes, I would uh, even talk to you and argue against you that these are not right. You don't have to follow this and so on. But because you don't follow it, I'm very happy. And thank you, my brothers and sisters, that you don't follow this, you know, verses. So um, I said all my uh, intention is to fight these 
uh, extremist Muslims that uh, they, you know, uh, they uh, destroy the beautiful image of the religion that I believe, okay, whatever you call it. I'm not a true Muslim. You can call it, um, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, call it, okay? But I believe that this is Islam, that the, uh, you know, extremist guy who was saying that I'm not representing, no, definitely I'm not representing your Islam. I'm not representing ISIS and Taliban Islam. I hate that Islam, okay? I'm representing the Islam that I know, okay? And uh, if you like it, like it. If you dislike it, that's up to you, all right? Yes, my brother. It is. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, like I said at the beginning, uh, I don't really care, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't buy into this thing where, where people say that, you know, anyone who has a different belief than, than me uh, is not a representative of my religion and therefore yeah. is not worth talking to or, yeah. or something like that. And, and since I focus on talking to Muslims, you know, anyone who doesn't fit into the perfect uh, Salafi interpretation uh, of Islam doesn't count as a Muslim. I don't buy into that because mm -hmm. to me, it's about people. Yes. It's not about a contest between Christianity and Islam. It's about me, that is, having a conversation with another human being and trying to guide them towards what I believe to be the truth uh, of Jesus Christ being the savior mm -hmm. of the world. So, you know, you want to call me a heretical Christian, uh, <laughs> go right ahead. You want to call perfect Dawa heretical Muslim, go right ahead. <laughs> doesn't make any difference to me because I don't care about labels. You know, yes. I, I'm, I, I'm not interested in labels. I'm interested in what yeah. is the truth. Yes, and I, I have to add again that I'm Christian as long as it comes to love one another and love your neighbor as you love yourself. I love these commands. So I'm Christian as well, okay? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, uh, a couple comments. Uh, so. Uh, you know, I'm satisfied that, well, let me put it this way. Uh, most of the things that, that you're saying are, are things that I can agree with as a Christian. Now, I believe that Christianity better represents what you're, you're stating as your beliefs than uh, Islam does. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, most of the things that uh, you're saying, uh, I could agree with. So I think that you're actually closer to my beliefs than a lot of people who would call themselves Muslim. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, my brother. Uh, so getting back to the original uh, discussion and uh, taking a different line of it here, uh, this comment was made by Bree early on. If the Bible is corrupted, that means mankind, uh, i.e. created beings, are mm -hmm. stronger than God. So human beings took God's word and messed around with them. Uh, wouldn't that make human beings more powerful than God? And this is kind of the argument that the Quran makes at places where it's saying that no one can corrupt God's word because, uh, you know, because all, God is all powerful, that, that he is uh, powerful enough to prevent that. So how would you respond to that? And, and in particular, uh, you know, why is the Quran, assuming the Quran is uncorruptible, uh, why is the Quran uncorruptible and the Bible is corruptible? All right, um, uh, because uh, actually, uh, as I understand that God uh, uh, wasn't, uh, I mean, he never said that he uh, tried to, uh, what is it, to protect Bible and Torah and previous messages, but he said that he protect Quran and the uh, hadiths that I mentioned uh, is a great proof that uh, they couldn't corrupt Quran, okay? Uh, because it was memorized by people. That's why they came up with fabricated hadiths that, uh, oh, the verse came down 10 times. Uh, the verse of stoning adulterers and suckling uh, an adult came down. It was kept under my uh, pillow and then a, a goat came in and uh, ate it, okay, and so on. So they tried to fabricate it hadiths because they couldn't enter these uh, barbaric uh, acts or these... Uh, uh, you know, like uh, <clears throat> uh, drinking camel urine and so on. So they try to somehow to keep their tradition uh, outside uh, the Quran because it was uh, prote uh, protected. And uh, yes, why 
God uh, didn't protect those. We can ask a lot of different questions because I have been asked by atheists that, excuse me, Microsoft uh, update its uh, software every year. Why God doesn't update his his message, you know? So this is how uh, uh, God has decided and um, they many people ask many different questions uh, that why, like I said, that the atheists why he doesn't uh, show himself to me or so on. So this is how he has decided to create us and test us, how this, he decided to test us. And he didn't make anything perfect. I know he could make us uh, flying like Superman and so on, so on. But he decided to create us like this. Maybe there are perfect planets, other side, uh, other, uh, you know, uh, in other galaxies, uh, definitely there is a planet that angels live there and nothing nothing bad is going on there. But the planet Earth is like this and we have to accept, they say, even these atheists say that, oh, God is cruel, how he can allow this, uh, you know, things happens in this, uh, you know, in this world, for example, when the animals, they eat each other like, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, so terrible, like hyenas, you know, when they, how they eat their Prayers, uh, uh, prayers, and so on. So this is uh, how they uh, God has created, and this is how we are. And uh, the the message is important for me that how we can get rid of these uh, problems that we are facing. And I see that the solution in Abrahamic religions, and finally I see it in uh, Islam. That's why I follow that, and I don't go to those details that why it is this, why it is that. So we have problems. And we have to find a solution to our problems. So whether it is in Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Marxism, or whatever, okay? So anybody who can guide us out of this jungle we are living in, I would follow that. Uh, I can give you a good example, Tedros, okay? A good example is my home country, Iran. We are under a dictatorship, okay? And there are different organizations that are fighting against Iranian regime. There are Marxist organizations, liberals, and so on. So there is a Muslim organization that I follow as well. And Christians, Jews, uh, you know, atheists, Marxists also follow a Muslim organization because they see that this organization is the best, you know, alternative to this regime. They fight the most and they follow. Mahatma Gandhi was a pagan. OK, but Muslims, Christians and Hindus, everybody followed Mahatma Gandhi because they saw his, uh, you know, his solution to get rid of British colonism the best. So they followed that. So I am such a person that anybody has a good solution to our problems. I follow. And if God doesn't have that solution, uh, if God cannot guide us out of this, uh, because I, I was a former atheist, so if God doesn't have that solution, then I'm not going to follow God, Islam or whatever. If Marxism can do that, I will follow Marxism. So I'm, I believe that I'm a rational person. OK, and so if you can show me a better way, a better solution uh, that can guide us out of this jungle as fast as possible, then I follow that. Believe me. OK, you can you can try. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Yeah, well, you know, I, I would argue that Christianity is definitely that better solution, um, but that would be a discussion for uh, another day. Uh, yes, yes, so, of course, yes. Kano uh, Siendo El Islam. Uh, so I assume uh, that you probably joined uh, late and didn't hear your position. So could you just re-clarify your position on Ahadith? Uh, yes, I said that. <clears throat> I said that I follow hadiths that are in line with Quran. I don't say all hadiths are wrong. Okay, <clears throat> so maybe you came uh, in in the middle or you were not listening. Okay, so I'm not a Quranist, and uh, I said that Bukhari himself was uh, a, the biggest hadith rejecter, and of course I believe that he fabricated a lot of hadiths as well. So not all of his hadiths are authentic, as uh, many Muslims claim and that's why um, uh, they run away uh, from me. They uh, don't want to debate with me because I have clear proofs that he fabricated a lot of hadiths as well. Uh, yes, so I believe in authentic hadiths. The better solution to a true system is true Jesus. 
All right, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, I say uh, I love Jesus, peace be upon him. And <clears throat> if you can do it, uh, just show it. I would uh, follow it. And you just have to show that, okay? So <clears throat> uh, I, I would love to see Christianity succeed before Islam <laughs> and take us out of uh, this jungle. So <laughs> I would love to see it because I want to get rid of this uh, <clears throat> jungle because I don't want to see my fellow human beings living on one dollar a day. They, you know, they suffer. I don't want to see that. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So I have your email, and uh, I think that we should have a future discussion yes, on thank you. Uh, how Christianity has vastly improved the world. Yes, yes. I, I, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, brother. I have to say, and I have said it many times in my debates, that Christianity definitely got rid of a lot of problems we faced. Uh, look at the uh, uh, Romans and Greeks, what they were doing my God, who stopped them was Christianity, was Jesus, peace be on him. His message, you know, stopped them, okay? So, uh, but the alternative, the, the final solution, uh, we can discuss about that as well, who can, you know, uh, take us out of this uh, terrible world. And uh, okay. I appreciate it very much, my brother. Uh, for those who would like to know, I go live every Saturdays uh 7 p.m central european time like exactly like today we were 1 uh, p.m uh eastern time i go live every saturday and you are welcome to have a discussion with me christians atheists they call in and we have a uh, great discussions like today okay we are brothers and sisters we have to be able to talk to each other normally without hate okay we have to love one another yes absolutely absolutely uh, so I, i'm sensing that that uh you know this conversation is, is coming to an end uh if anyone in the chat has any pressing comments or questions please put those in now um, otherwise we will have future discussions with prophet yes. dawa yeah. and again to any muslim uh, any muslim in particular who doesn't like uh you know what he's having to say you can have your opportunity to come and have a discussion with me as well yes. and you can defend your own perspective and my, my uh, channel as well <laughs> and uh, on my channel yes, as yes. well and on the perfect dollar channel as well yes. uh, muslims uh, definitely i encourage you to yes. have those conversations with him because as i said in my introduction uh to perfect dollars credit he is someone who is consistent that he is yeah, willing to tell uh, Muslims who believe differently than him that he is wrong or that they are wrong uh, and he's willing to tell people who are not Muslims that agree with him that they're right on those points. Too often these discussions are about winning and losing and they're not about the truth of the matter. Uh, you know people especially like to point to, to Christian Prince and he is uh, he does a lot of great work. He is definitely an expert at winning conversations. Uh, but then they tell me like, and you know, you should be more aggressive like Christian Prince or, or whatever. And I have my own style. I, you know, I think that the truth stands on its own. I, I'm not criticizing Christian Prince. Uh, but if you're willing, if you want to have these friendly discussions, this is the place for it. And the Perfect Dawa channel is also a good place for that. I just have to say sorry about uh, uh, that uh, uh, Christian Prince. I Once I had discussion with him as well, and I regret very much because, you know, I have to say sorry, I have to say that I would never, uh, you know, convert to uh, ISIS, Taliban, and what Christian Prince uh, and those people preach, whatever it is, you know, the way they preach it is terrible, you know, when they humiliate you, even my brother, Christian brother, uh, Martin was saying that he treated you very badly, okay, you know, like this, we can, we are human beings, love one another, C can you even understand this one, love your neighbor as you love yourself, can I go to my Christian neighbor and say, Oh, stupid Christian, why you believe in this? Why? That's that's not love. Come on. Uh, this uh, extremist, ignorant extremist say that, oh, don't say Merry Christmas to Christian. It is shirk. I say, come on, you are crazy. Okay, this is terrible. Stop such a, you know, bad uh, 
preaching because I love to say to my neighbors, I have to say uh, Merry Christmas and it, it is beautiful, you know, to be kind, to be just to people is beautiful. Why you preach such a terrible uh, things, you know? And uh, anyway, uh, those who would like to uh, join me and fight this uh, Muslim extremist, please uh, join me. And I, as I said, I wish that you call EF Dawa and such a, uh, places and ask them why they block me, why they are afraid of me. I appreciate it very much because I need help. Uh, uh, this one, uh, I think I'll just answer. Uh, so it was written to me. Uh, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. Perfect Dawa is a perfect deceiver. Please don't mislead your weak audience. Satan never changes. Uh, so, uh, Lay, I, I guess, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, when did you see me, uh, you know, agreeing with anything that was incorrect? And now I didn't tell, I didn't call anyone names. I didn't, I wasn't mean about anything. But when I thought Perfect Dawa was in air, when he was saying something in contradiction to the truth of Christianity, I was firm on that point. I, I pressed him on his points, but I did that without being rude, without being mean about it. So, uh, Please note that there's a difference between standing for what is true and being aggressive. You can do both at the same time. You can do neither. You, you know, you can be weak and stand or not aggressive uh, and stand for what is false. Uh, you can be aggressive and stand what's for true. You can be nice and stand what's for true. And you can be nice. Uh, or and you can be aggressive and stand for what is false. So you can be any combination of those two. They're, they're not equivalent to one another. I try to be kind and polite yeah. and friendly, but also stand firm in the truth. Great, great, my brother. And uh, so uh, this might be a good comment to close out here on from uh, Olashka. So he says, I have a question. Can Perfect Dawa back up what you said during this live stream with Quranic scriptures? I know that you did quote the Quran uh, a number of times, um, but uh, let me re rephrase the question this way. Do you try to base all of your beliefs based on stuff you find in the Quran? No, I, um, I read also from uh, Ali Radiola, also uh, his uh, letters to uh, to his governor, okay, Malik, if you want, I can read a little bit more of that as well. Uh, that uh, <clears throat> uh, It says, Malik, kindness, forgiveness, and loving the people should be your priority and do not attack them like a wild animal because people are two groups. One is those who are your brothers by religion and one those who are your brothers by by creation. People do bad deeds because of different reasons, intentionally or by mistake, but you forgive them as you expect that your God forgives your bad deeds. You are stronger than the people, but remember that the one who put you there is stronger than you, and God is stronger than the one who put you there. Malik, don't fight uh, God because you can't uh, get away from from his anger and you will always need his mercy and forgiveness. Whenever you forgive someone, uh, do not regret it and never be happy to, uh, of punishing someone. So it is not just uh, Quran and I uh, have said it, um, but uh, I even uh, uh, follow, uh, let me uh, read something else. I followed these uh, teachings um, if uh, Buddha says the kind of seed so, uh, sown will produce that uh, kind of fruit, those who do good will uh, reap good results. Those who do evil will reap evil results. If you uh, carefully plant a good seed, you will joyfully gather good fruit. So such a statement also, it doesn't have to be from God, can be from uh, Buddha as well. I follow them. So anything, anybody say something good, rational, beautiful, I follow that. Okay. So yes, I hope that I have answered that, my brother. Yeah, I, I think that, that you answered that, that well. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, obviously not everyone's going to agree with your perspective. Not everyone's going to agree with my perspective, but I think that we can have these friendly discussions. I hope that this channel demonstrates how the, to have these conversations. And to be frank, this is the way normal conversations in real life are going to work. Uh, yes. the, the kind of people who call into shows and want to argue, they are very rare in the work, real world. Uh, and I'm more interested in people having conversations with people in their own lives, uh, people taking the, the material and having, you know, Christians taking the material and having conversations with Muslims they know. If you try to have a conversation with, say, a coworker who is a Muslim, and you immediately go to the ultra aggressive mode where you're you're being super critical of everything that conversation is going to end real quickly you know you may be able to embarrass the person and, and make them realize that you have more knowledge than them or something along those lines but you're not going to do anything of benefit to that person from a christian perspective the only thing that is beneficial uh, is starting a relationship maintaining a relationship so that you can bring them to the gospel that doesn't mean compromise on the truth stand firm for the truth but you don't have to do it in such a way that the person wants the conversation to end ideally you want the conversation to continue so thank you all for tuning in today. Any last words from you, Perfect Dawa? Uh, thank you very much. No, I just uh, appreciate it very much. And I would go definitely with you to a church, uh, but I would never go to a church with Christian Prince. <laughs> I just have to say that, okay? So uh, to be good, to be friendly is much better. You can, uh, you know, attract people much better easier than to be aggressive and hateful towards them. I don't think anybody uh, like that. So I appreciate it very much, my brother. Uh, the, I hope that we can uh, talk together uh, more uh, in the future and we can um, unite against our common enemies. Yes. Yeah, we, we might have a, a bit of disagreement on exactly where our enemies stand, but we definitely do have yes. some enemies in common. And, okay. you know, I stand firm on the gospel message. I stand firm on the salvific work of Christ, that we achieve salvation by placing our trust in Christ alone. Uh, but I want people to come to that truth. I don't just want to make them embarrassed and run yeah. away from thank a you. conversation. So thank you. thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, I'll be back in a little less than three hours uh, on my other channel, my Bible study channel. At, when I end this stream, you'll get a redirect to that. So if you're interested in checking out my Bible study, but go ahead and follow that link and set a reminder and come back in two hours and 45 minutes. Uh, today we will be discussing, uh, so last week was Easter, obviously. Uh, this week's readings focus on kind of the, the start of the spread of the gospel message, taking that message of Easter morning and starting to spread it outward from the original group of disciples. And in particular, we're going to be, uh, the gospel reading is the passage called Doubting Thomas, perhaps an unfair moniker to Thomas, uh, but we will see Thomas's faith declaration that Jesus is his Lord and his God. So hope you tune in to that. Um, I'll be on tomorrow with Lloyd de Jong. We will be discussing whether child marriage is allowed in Islam or not. Thank you all for joining us. See you again soon. Uh, thank you. I just would like to have a final question. Is that okay mm -hmm. if I can share the video on yep. my channel as well? Yes. All right. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, thank I you license very much. all my content freely. Anyone mm -hmm. is welcome to take it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you, everybody. Thank you. Take care.